Hello everyone, Max here with Fiction Rant to whine and complain about a game that I love. I'm talking about Seven Days to Die, which is basically a mashup of Minecraft and Left 4 Dead. In a relatively hardcore survival experience, my lovely wife introduced me to this game back when we were dating, back in 2016, and by that time it had been released in early access for three years already, starting in 2013. And now, finally in 2024, we're finally getting the full release of the game, but even with that, we're still not getting all the promised features, though the game has been fairly complete for a while now. Like, it's been playable. Here's the thing. The Fun Pimps, the developers of the game, have a fairly chaotic and antagonistic approach to game development. Here's a couple of examples of what I mean. Multiple times now, players have come up with exploity ways of simplifying game mechanics. Most notably, the Horde Knights, which show up every seven days, this being an open-world survival crafting game with destructible environments. Some players, early on, were digging down to bedrock and building their bases there, so no zombies would be able to break in and destroy their stuff. And in fact, because of the way that the detection and sneak system worked in the game, none of them would even attempt to break in and destroy your stuff because they wouldn't be able to see the player, so they'd have no reason to attempt to break in with the exception of Horde Knight, when all the zombies get to know where you are, and uh, at the time, the AI would basically take the most direct route to get to you, like as the crow flies, which would mean attempting to dig straight down to you, which would take way longer than a single night, so you'd be safe. The Fun Pimps didn't like this playstyle, and fair enough, so they gave all the zombies engineering degrees, so now instead of taking the most direct path they that might require bashing down some walls, they'll seek out the path of least resistance, and only after meeting a barrier will they finally commence bashing. This led to players building big old mazes for their zombies to traverse, and is largely how the game works now. Other changes were things like making it so if you're driving around on a horde night, you know, faster than the zombies can run, swarms of ultra-fast vultures will just spawn out of nowhere, chase you down, and murder you. Water uh, was made significantly more difficult to obtain more recently, with the side effect being that a lot of other recipes uh, were suddenly much more difficult to produce, notably glue. You need water to make glue. I remember this particular one causing a complaint from some person who was trying to do this archery, sneaky build, so they'd, you know, make explosive arrows and stuff for Horde Knights, so they needed a lot of water to make the glue for making those special arrows. And this change would make that build way more difficult. So the fun pimps responded by basically saying, well, don't play that way then, which is just a lame response. There's also been a lot of effort put into game mechanics that were just trashed later on, and I get that that happens with game development. Sometimes you need to swap out a perk system or change some NPC AI, but it amounts to a lot of wasted effort, as evidenced by the fact that the game has taken over a decade to make. Now, that was a lot of background, but I'm barely scratching the surface of what all's going on with the game. What I would really like to talk about with this video is five things I would do if I were in charge of producing Seven Days to Die. Number one, pick a perk system and stick to it. So far, we've had a the original system of you improve skills by using them. We then had a pure XP, and then that gives you, you know, you level up and you get perk points and you spend that on things, even if that's stuff that you've never done anything with before, so it's like, oh yeah, I'm using wooden clubs that scale off of strength, and I put all of my perk points into intelligence because I can do that. Now, you have this sort of a weird hybrid system where you still earn XP and you level up and you get perk points, but a lot of your skill progression is now dictated by skill books that you find while exploring, which forces you to explore and not just homestead. Personally, and I've seen a lot of other people with the feedback of, I'd love to see a mix of the first two systems with you know, tools and weapon skills improving through actually using them. Okay, I used my axe a lot. I'm now better at that. And then things like crafting, just being behind perk points. You know, you don't, one of the issues that they had back in those days was, oh, well, my tool crafting skill only improves when I craft tools. So let me craft 900 stone axes. So that'll improve my skills. No, don't do that. Have it be a perk point. Okay, I've invested this perk. Now my tools are better. Mix the systems like that. Number two, don't bother with random world gen until the game is done. If you've played the game, then you know that there's two main ways of setting up your map. You can play on Navis Gain, which is a pre-constructed map, which they've spent a lot of time refining and updating over the years. And then there's this random world gen, which to be fair, has gotten a lot better over the years, but has led to things like 
one game that my friends and I were playing together, we ended up calling this area Curse Town because this entire city was made out of floating blocks and random chasms. And like we lost multiple characters there that had to then be teleported using console commands. The thing is, though, Navis Gain is already huge. And the game has a ton of internal progression and getting around the map just isn't that fast. So it's not like they were going to run out of map content all that fast anyway. People weren't going to get bored with the map because they explored the whole thing unless they spent thousands of hours to do so. So why bother refining a random world generation system when it'd be so much better if you spent all that time and effort making Navis Gain amazing and then maybe later on, you know, add random world generation as a later update or DLC or something like that. You know, make the game first and then add the bells and whistles, you know, things like that. Number three, stop fighting the players. The thing about open world sandbox style games is they're all about making your own fun. You want to build a staircase to the sky? Do it. You want to make a one-to-one -one copy of Helm's Deep? Go for it. You want to play the whole game as if it's Farmville? Why not? But no. The fun pimps have a singular vision for how they want their sandbox game to be played and have nerfed all systems that defy that into the ground. I mentioned before their response to a player who wanted to play an archery build but wouldn't be able to because of their changes to the water was just, and their response was just, play a different way. There's also been major nerfs to farming to the point where unless you have a ton of perk points to dedicate to only farming to max it out, you cannot sustainably farm, period. You will get less seeds back than you planted and eventually run out unless you go exploring and find more. Why? Why do this? Why force the homesteading type players to go dungeon crawling? In my own group, we've got people that enjoy different things. I like to build bases. My wife likes to go farming and uh, go hunting. Others of our, my friends like to go exploring and do dungeon crawls and you know that's the kind of stuff that they enjoy. These are all perfectly valid play styles, but the fun pimps have decided and done a lot of work uh, changing the game to make it so that none of those are viable playstyles except for Dungeon Crawler. Why do that? Number four, quit trying to make it look pretty. In the last couple of years, the Fun Pimps have proudly unveiled all new character models for their zombies while introducing a ton of new blocks to play with and higher resolution models for basically everything. The thing is, the new and improved models still look like they belong on an Xbox, Xbox 360 at best, so they're still a decade out of date. And that's okay. Nobody is playing Seven Days to Die for the graphical fidelity. They're playing it for the gameplay. Stop wasting time throwing out all your old art assets and replacing them with new ones and finish the dang game. Seriously, they've had over a decade to work on this thing and have sold millions of copies of the early access version of the game. So of course, the character models look like they're out of date. Because they are. They're a decade old. They didn't look that great even when they came out. And that's okay. If you finish the game and then update with shiny new models later, that's fantastic. Everybody would appreciate that. But nobody's playing Seven Days to Die because of how pretty it looks. We're playing it for the gameplay. Focus on that. As it stands, they've been working on this for so long that all that effort they put into making the game have a facelift just feels like wasted time and effort. Number five, finally, do right by the console players. There's a bit of a controversy surrounding the 1.0 release of Seven Days because there's no real way to update the console players to the 1.0 version since they're all on decade-old consoles. There's been talk of them trying to figure out how to hand out coupons or something, you know, give a discount, but the fact is, these people have already purchased the game for a reasonable price and haven't received an update in years. Oh yeah, I didn't mention this before. Yeah, the console early access version is a few years of updates behind the PC version. So basically the early access promise has already been broken and now they're looking at probably having to pay full price for the game again. This is so not cool, okay? These people provided the capital that you needed to develop a game for a decade. You don't get to charge them twice. The fun pimps need to either set up a way of getting release version copies to every console player who wants one, free of charge, or should just issue refunds to everybody who bought the game on console. There is no other option, period. And there's my list. I really do love this game. Don't get me wrong. I have some gripes about it, but I do love it. It's fantastic. 
The gameplay loop is really engaging for me and I've put in hundreds of hours over the years. I just want the game to succeed and grow into what we all want it to be. In the meantime though, what do you all think? Are there other changes that you would make if you were the God King of Seven Days to Die? Let me know in the comments what you think about the whole situation. And until next time, live long and prosper and may the force be with you.